Those of you in the IT space may have heard of the Pirate Box from a little bit ago. This was a device that could be used to conduct anonymous file transfers and do light anonymous chatting. It was a pretty cool concept that I unfortunately never had the privilege to use before the Pirate Box project closed up shop. Now me? I want that experience. That cool dead drop by Mr. Hacker Man Watchdogger 9000. So in that light, I decided to make a jank version of that. Here it is. I'm calling it 60 Shares Whiskey. The key features here are that the device can be used to upload and download files anonymously and also leave anonymous chats to one another. Files are deleted at midnight every single night through a cron job and the app makes no record of who accessed what. Now, this is nothing spectacular in any capacity, although I did spend like eight or nine hours trying to get the upload front end to work. That, that was brutal. And it's also missing a chat box like the OG Pirate Box had, but Hey, give me a break, my computer science degree has only got me to this level so far. Psych! I spent another 8 hours debugging this thing, we got a chat log go. Let's go, boys! I went through at bare minimum 8 to 9 C4s during this entire process at C4. Please, for the love of God, sponsor me. But really, all this script is doing is creating a hotspot, serving a web page, and then transferring files that are uploaded to a local database, and then serving those to users. So let's go through an example. I have a very secret, sneaky Freedom Machine STL file I need to get to my friend, but I don't want to use Google Drive or iCloud because they might tell on me. Well, here you go. And I know Chrome is logging your every move and so is basically every other web browser in existence. And I also know that files can be recovered when they're deleted. So honestly, this is just a cool proof of concept that could ultimately amount to a wireless Dropbox. So don't bet the farm on the $20 board and some random dude on the internet script being Fort Knox. Everyone good? Everyone okay with that? Can we avoid the 8,000 comments screaming about how imperfect this is? Great, thank you, God bless. Anyway, uh, let's show you how to get this set up on a Raspberry Pi. Now, in my case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W along with a Pi Sugar 2. Here is a bill of materials you will need to get the 2W set up. And in the description, I do have affiliate links to these items, but please feel free to not use those links. Find them elsewhere if you like, find them cheaper, whatever you'd like to do. All the links do is just support the channel. To get started, let's flash an SD card, not by using your privates, but with the Raspberry Pi Imager. Go ahead and download that from the link down below, get it installed and open it up. Now, on Choose Device, select No Filtering. In Choose OS, select Raspberry Pi OS Other. Then select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64. Keep in mind, as you can see here, this only works for these models of the Raspberry Pi, so please, again, for the love of God, choose your Pi wisely. I'm, I'm using the 2W, I'm telling you right now, I'm using the 2W, if you don't use it, I don't know what to tell you. Now, the reason we're using Raspberry Pi OS Lite here is because this is the only operating system I've used in testing. But the sixth, I actually, Arch Linux is for superior. I swear, everyone in the last video was like, oh, you're whining so much, you're, you're whining, you're complaining about your comments so much. Yeah, because you people don't listen. Okay, anyway, now plug in your micro SD card into your computer. You're gonna likely need a USB to micro SD card adapter here, so make sure to get that. Then choose the SD card you've plugged in. Select next. And at this point, it will ask you if you want to apply custom OS settings. And for this, we do. Select edit settings. Under general, select the checkbox for set username and password and create a new username and password. Please remember this password as we're gonna need it to get connected to your Pi in the coming steps. I don't want to see the comments. Six to eight, what is my passport? Under the services tab, select enable SSH and use password authentication. Click save, then select yes to apply those settings we just added. Select yes again, sit back and wait. On your first time flashing this, the imager will need to pull down the ISO, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. Even then, the flashing itself takes quite a bit, so go take a 10 to 15 minute break, enjoy your favorite C4, maybe a pretzel or two, and just chill. Once it's done, eject the SD card if it did not do so automatically, and then insert your SD card into your Raspberry Pi. All right, now go ahead and plug your Pi into an ethernet port of a switch or a router, so that way it can be handed an IP address. And for those of you with a Pi Zeros, again, we're gonna need a USB micro to ethernet adapter. Ensure that when you plug this in, that you're plugging it into the USB port and not the power port. Now find your device's IP in your router. Yours is likely gonna look different than mine or use something like Nmap or Angry IP Scanner to find your Pi's IP. Next, we need to SSH into your Raspberry Pi and you can do this from 
a display. However, this can be kind of clunky. So again, I'm recommending that you use SSH here. And for this, I use Termius. This software is pretty sweet as it's an SSH and SFTP client server all in one type deal. Free feel, free feel, what the frick? Feel free to use something like Putty or another SSH client or even just CMD to get connected. So SSH into your Pi using the creds you made before and now we're connected. Go to my GitHub repo from the link in the description and download the 60 shares whiskey setup script on your computer. Also, if you take a look there, if you want to print out this Pi Sugar 2 case, I've left those STL files in the GitHub repo as well. All right, now go ahead and open the file using Notepad++, Visual Studio, etc. Go to this little area right here. And here you'll need to change the country code to your country code and 1000% you need to change the WPA passphrase to something way more secure than just change me. Feel free to change the SSID as well. Now save your changes and ensure that you're using Unix line feed convention. If it's using CRLF, change it to LF. Yes, this matters, please just do it. Now once we're done configuring this file, we need to get this from your computer over to the Pi. In Termius, we can do this with SFTP and drag and drop. You can also use FileZilla or even just use SCP source destination command. Now place this in your user directory. So it should be around home slash username. Alrighty, let's get this installed. Ensure that you're in the same directory as this script. Type the command ls. If you see the 60 shares whiskey setup script, you're in the right place. If not, use the CD command to change to the directory that it's in. Type chmod plus x s and hit the tab to autocomplete. Hit enter. Next, type sudo dot forward slash s and tab again for autocomplete. Hit enter. Now type in your password, hit enter, and let the script do its thing. So first the script will update and upgrade the system for you, which will take a little bit of time. And after that's done, it will start downloading all dependencies that it needs as well. Now this is not an unattended script as with Raspberry Pi OS, we have to set our localization settings. Hit enter, which should bring you to the RasPi configuration page. Go to localization settings, then WLAN country. Set this to your country. Again, do not skip this as this will not work without you setting this. Once you are done, hit finish and the script will continue and shouldn't require any further input on your part. There is a lot of stuff that this script needs to grab, so I'd really recommend that you don't use anything less than a 32 gigabyte SD card. When it's done, it will display the IP address it's hosting the web page on. Now, by default, the SSID will be 60 shares whiskey and the password will be change me in the event that you didn't change it like I told you to. Now, if you did change your password like you were supposed to, then it'll be whatever password you entered here. Now, connect to that wireless network from another device. Navigate to this web address right here, and there you go. Test out uploading documents and chatting to your heart's content. Now I could just hear people screaming about, what's the point of sex day? What even is the point of this? I don't get what this would ever even be used for. There's so many other things that do this better. I swear, people's imaginations die the second they click on a video. Where is your whimsy? Where is your joy? If you don't have a reason to make this, then don't. If you don't like what I made, make something yourself. Again, the concept of this program is to allow you a semi-anonymous way to hand off files and leave messages on a portable dead drop device. All right, now if you have any comments or run into any issues when getting this set up, please feel free to leave a comment down below or a comment on my issues page on the, on the GitHub repo. And I'd be more than happy to help you in any way that I can. Anyways, Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, remember our sole objectives. Stop the killing. Stop the dying. I'll see y'all later.